Today's a fun day. You know, I do development for other platforms, but at heart, I still consider myself an Apple developer. I love developing for the Mac platform. I love developing for iOS. The Mac platform, who says the Mac platform? I love developing for Apple platforms because I love Apple. And today is the first day of WWDC, which is Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference. So today we get to see all the cool stuff that Apple is releasing to make it easier for my job as a software developer over the next year or so. Today is going to be a bit relaxing, just the keynote itself as well as uh, the developer state of the union. Because of that, I like to take the Monday of Dub Dub Week a bit chill, but I do have a lot I need to get done this morning, so let's go over to the coffee shop and get some admin work done and send some emails and stuff like that. Besides finding out about all the cool stuff that Apple is going to be releasing to make my life as a software developer more easy, I'm also just kind of excited from the consumer standpoint. You see, there's a bunch... Oh, watch my head. There's a bunch of uh, things that I'd love just as a consumer, as a user. Some pro-level Mac hardware with the new Apple Silicon chips. Uh, either a MacBook Pro or a larger iMac. We'll see what happens. Besides that, I also want to see something, you know, that I can do with this awesome new M1 iPad. Like, I want to see Final Cut Pro on the iPad. I want to see Xcode on the iPad. But we'll see in a couple hours. So I got a bit of a late start today, meaning that only have about half an hour here today to, that's not good, to do my usual morning routine of checking emails. Hmm. There goes the new Yeti Tumblr. Mac Power users. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, only have about an half an hour to go through and do my normal routine of Applying the emails, admin work, kind of back end stuff like that. So, while driving home just now, I realized something that might change my plans a little bit. I was planning on doing some work uh, for Rescue Time, getting everything ready for release this week, as well as doing some uh, Sigma work uh, for our new. Uh, what's that thing called for our new student information system. However, it's supposed to rain the rest of this week and that means I need to get the lawn mowed. So that's what I'm going to do now. Go get changed, do a little bit of mowing. We have about three quarter acre property here and it takes me about an hour and a half to mow with the riding lawnmower. Fortunately, the riding lawnmower the past couple years has been giving me problems. This year it kind of gave up the ghost. And so I decided to replace it with an electric push mower because you know, no motors or at least no gasoline motors have to deal with. But with the push mower, it takes me about two hours and 15 minutes to mow. Battery lasts about 40 minutes. That means I need almost four complete charges of battery to mow the property. Unfortunately, it takes four hours for the battery to charge. It's raining tomorrow. I don't think I'm getting everything mowed. But so far, it's been wonderful. It's so quiet. I can now listen to an audiobook with just my regular AirPods in, AirPods Pro in, uh, without extra earmuffs on top. And, you know, I can just press a button and it starts. Which reminds me, I need to go get the key. Okay, let's do this. yards about a quarter done time to go recharge the battery and get back to some rescue time work 10 13 so less than three hours till the keynote address just a couple hours to go which means time to do some really intense focus work to get some rescue time bugs fixed so we can get this out the door and i can relax during the keynote I absolutely love WWDC. It's by far my favorite Apple keynote of the year. Now, sure, everyone knows that the September iPhone event is Apple's big keynote. It's the one that everybody watches, that everyone pays attention to, because iPhone is pretty much their business. It makes up so much of their profit. However, WWDC is their developer conference. I'd love to see some excellent refinements in the iPad OS though, just to add some more power user features to it, because I love using the iPad, and I would use it almost exclusively while on the go if I could but I can't just yet. I really need Final Cut Pro or Xcode on the iPad to be able to take my workflow with me. Let's go. Oh, Chinese food. Because 
it's a party day. It's dubbed up. So that was really exciting. I didn't really get any of the things that I had hoped for initially, like no new Mac hardware, which to be fair was kind of expected or at least would have been a surprise because Dub Dub is kind of 50 50 on hardware releases. Didn't get a great Xcode for iPad. Uh, they did some great new updates for uh, whatever they call it, Swift Playgrounds, uh, which means you can actually develop full applications and submit to the App Store. Doesn't really help me at all for Rescue Time as it is a major application and is not written in Swift UI, so I don't think I'll be able to do anything with that. And no Final Cut Pro whatsoever, which I guess makes sense, but I was hoping. However, we did get something which, or at least a hint of something, which I was no longer expecting, and that is a Screen Time API, which hopefully will be amazing for Rescue Time, but I think I'm gonna have to wait for the developer uh, platform State of the Union in a couple of hours to really see what that means, or possibly later sessions once the API documentation is out. However, when that comes, I'm diving into that to see what we can do with that, uh, see if we can really improve our iOS app. Uh, and fix some of the bugs that we've had in there. Uh, so that is awesome. Looking forward to that. With the developer state of the union finished, that means Dub Dub 21 day one is finished. I have a whole week of sessions that I look forward to. So now that I've had a chance to reflect a little bit on what was released today and uh, got some additional de details from the developer state of the union, uh, here are my thoughts. So there was really nothing that I was hoping for, but there are plenty of things that I'm really happy to get. Let's start with macOS. First of all, Shortcuts is coming over to macOS, which I think is great, but I'm far more excited about universal control. You see, I always have my iPad opened here to the side and I'm working on my Mac and I'm hopping back and forth between the keyboards. It's not really a great ergonomic solution. I would love if I could have the iPad uh, mounted up here and kind of eye level, but then I couldn't use the magic keyboard or the trackpad. And now with macOS, I'll be able to use the same mouse and keyboard that I do on my Mac. Hopefully my beautiful mechanical keyboard here. And I'll just be able to move between them. I'm incredibly excited about this and it's not something I'd ever expected to come from Apple. Beyond that, iPad OS. Sure, we've got Swift Playgrounds, which I'm really excited for. I will be able to do some Swift de development for some small apps on the iPad. I mean, I won't be able to do any full rescue time development on there for quite some time, if ever, but it's a start. I'm more excited about the multitasking improvements that they added. I think those are gonna be a complete game changer for me on iPad OS, but even beyond that are the quick notes feature. Now I'm really going to reconsider using Apple Notes as my primary capture inbox. Certainly on iPad OS, maybe on Mac OS, depending on how that works there as well. As expected, there are some awesome Swift improvements. I've been keeping tabs on it, but it's great to see that there are some huge improvements, uh, mainly in the line of async await and concurrency that I've been really looking forward to and hoping to use for a long time, especially as I start to use Swift for server development. I've already talked about Swift Playgrounds on iPadOS, which I'm really excited to play around with. Xcode Cloud is also something that I'm really looking forward to. I signed up for the beta wait list. Hopefully I'll get into that sooner rather than later. The big thing, as I mentioned earlier, is this Screen Time API. It is focused around around parental controls, but I'm really hoping that we can use that at rescue time. As of right now, the details are still fuzzy. I'm gonna to need to be reading a whole bunch of documentation as well as attending all the sessions on it this week. I am really hopeful though, at least it shows that Apple is listening to some feedback in this area. Now my remaining task for this day is to get this video edited and get to bed so I can be fully rested and awake for all my regular dev work this week, as well as watching a whole bunch of dub dub sessions. See ya.